Hey everybody, it's Norm Farrar and we've got a mixed up episode today. You wouldn't believe what we've been going through with internet cutouts, logging out of StreamYard before going live. Anyways, I'm going to have Kelsey at the controls here and hopefully it works. So, hey everybody, it's Norm Farrar aka The Beard Guy and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, The Rise of the Micro Brands. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. All right, so if you are seeing me live, I hope you are, because I have no control over this anymore. Uh, we are broadcasting to you live on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. If any of you are watching on uh, a replay, just skip ahead. If you're watching on the profile page, you can always just jump over to the official Norm Ferrar, AKA The Beard Guy, and watch the whole episodes, video clips, and a variety of new content. And we post content every day. One thing, I just wanted to let you know that I do have another podcast called I Know This Guy. It's about interesting people I know and interesting people they know. We dive deep into their successes, their failures, what brought them, and the hurdles that they had to face to become a success. It's a great show, so check it out. It's I Know This Guy. I think that's it from my end now, Kelsey. Yes, hello. It looks like so, we have... Oh, I go haven't, ahead. I haven't yet curled up in the fetal position. You're fine. Uh, we are live, so, yep. Uh, so keep us going, buddy. <laughs> All right. All right, and welcome Tracy from Australia. She says, hi, Norm. Um, so Hello. yes, everyone, uh, subscribe to us on social media. You know the drill. We have Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Um, any content that uh, is up um, from Lunch with Norm goes directly to YouTube. Um, so if you miss an episode or you want to see the full thing, you can always just head over there. We also put out uh, short clips too. And we have a uh, official website as well, lunchwithnorm.com. Uh, all the guest bios, everything you need is there as well. And all we right. are an official podcast. So subscribe to us on uh, either Apple or Spotify, wherever you get your, um, your podcast. And hello, Simon. Hey, Welcome Simon. again. And I think that's it for me. Okay. Did you tell me to smash likes or anything like that? That's right. If you're okay. watching right now, smash those like buttons. And yeah, enjoy the show, everyone. Okay. So I think that's it for today's updates. Um, what's really interesting, if you do watch our YouTube channel or if you look at our Facebook, we constantly are putting new content up, repurposing new content. And so it's really cool. The tool that we use, we have the uh, CEO and founder of the company that we use, uh, Hannah Mora today from repurpose.io. And Hannah is, uh, I met him through LinkedIn and you know we just got chat chatting over the last little while. Um, he has developed the uh, app that we use called uh, repurpose.io. He's a software paneur, I think the name is. And um, he's a dad. He's, he has his pet sitting behind him. So if you hear him barking, just let him know it's going to be my dog knocking over lights or his. But anyways, we'll get to Hannah in a second. I'm really excited to talk to him uh, and, and talk to you about it. I said to everybody in the last podcast, you got to watch this podcast because if you are not repurposing, you're missing out on very simple, easy way to create content and spread it effortlessly, especially with this app. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee and enjoy the show. Hanny, are you there? Oh my God, Hello, it is actually working. StreamYard is working for us today. Thank love you. It. Love it, love it. How's it going? It's, uh, I've had better days, but better days. Uh, it's, no, it's, we're it's here. going. <laughs> I see, the show must go on and it's going. Yeah. So I'm excited to be here. It was pretty funny, like, 30 seconds before we were going to go live, I get booted out. You guys were left on. I couldn't even log back in, but we got around it. <laughs> it's all good. So why don't we, uh, we well, you're a fellow Canadian. I know that. Yeah. Um, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yeah. I mean, you know, I live in Toronto and uh, I'm a big geek when it comes to video. And I have a software computer engineering degree way back in the day. And uh yeah, I'm a dad of two girls who I'm trying to get into coding and stuff like that as well. 
And uh, yeah, we just got a new puppy a few months ago from, yeah, I guess, yeah, three, four months ago. And yeah, life is hectic. Life is crazy. But, uh, you know, what we do at Repurpose and, you know, what I do, what I'm passionate about is creating tools that automate things in your life, especially when it comes to content. And that's what I'm really good at is like creating solutions for content creators, podcasters, people who live stream, people who create videos. And, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of content you create. We love it. We love to help automate it and get it out to different social media platforms. And that's, that's what we've been focusing on for, I think, seven years now. If you think about all the tools we've created, I think we, I was looking at it, it was like seven, seven years ago, we started creating our most basic tools. And, you know, we're here today with repurpose.io. Well, I think when we first met, I, I reached out on LinkedIn and I was just saying that um, this tool that we were using um, made our lives so much easier and that we found that with our clients. So with my um, with my managed services account, I have a bunch of clients that are Amazon sellers or Shopify sellers, and they really don't use social media to where they should be. And most of them uh, are saying it's just too tough. Mm -hmm. And... You know, through our initial conversation, I was just saying, yeah, if, if only people knew how easy it is, first of all, if they could curate content, you know, to understand that, and then to just repurpose content. And I've talked, like with my business partner in, in um, PR Reach, we talk about repurposing um, other forms of content, uh, like images and press releases and blog articles, but we don't talk so much about um, video. Mm -hmm. and how easy it is so i just thought this was perfect for you to come in and you know just tell everybody about um you know repurposing and what it's all about people might not know exactly what repurposing means so why don't True. we start there yeah like, what do you mean by repurposing content yeah so repurposing uh, in my definition is taking a single piece of content whether it's you know a podcast or an audio or a video it doesn't matter taking a single piece of content and turning it into multiple pieces of content that you can post on different platforms. Uh, so the goal is that you are visible on social, you're posting on social, you're scheduling content on social regularly, but you don't have this rat race of this, this tendency of, I have to create content every day, right? right? So repurposing is the goal here is create once publish everywhere. That's, that's our motto is, you know, our, our tagline is create once publish everywhere. Uh, so we help take away these, the misconception that you have to create content every day. You don't, you can create content once a week and have, but still have content or pieces of that content out on different platforms, um, through our, through repurpose.io. And that's, that's the goal is to help you automate that step. Yeah, I get even last night, last night, nine o'clock, somebody was talking to me and they said, uh, uh how do you do it? How do you, you know, mm -hmm. we see you on social media, you know, putting out uh, like your face, right? <laughs> and it's all Kelsey. Kelsey takes these clips that we're talking about today. He divides them up into, you know, smaller pieces and he sends them out to different platforms um, at different times. We don't want to have, you know, one clip on five different platforms and everybody that's looking at it just, you know, gets hit with, um, mm -hmm five of the same thing the same day so we spread it out and mix them up but it's it's been so easy and you know for anybody who's listening that you know wants to know more uh, get more detail after this um, and talk to Kelsey about it you know we could we could point you in that direction or of course we'll send you over to uh, the repurpose.io site and you can talk directly with Hanny but um Anyways, can you, let's get into talking about the benefits. What are some of the benefits of repurposing content? Um, well, the, the goal is to get exposure. Right? Mm -hmm. The goal is to be where your audience or your potential audience is already hanging out. Right? So uh, if you do an audio podcast and you know your audience may not even know what a podcast is or how to find a podcast or even how to listen to a podcast, by having that content in its entirety or clips of it on social media where they hang out, whether they favor Facebook, whether they like Twitter, whether they like Instagram, it doesn't matter. You, you're going to be on all those platforms. So the goal is to make it easy for someone to consume content where they hang out. And also they consume the content or, you know, see your face or hear your voice on 
um, lost my train of thought, without leaving the platform, which is also important. So meaning we're not going on Facebook and say, hey, go to my YouTube channel to watch the video there. No, you want to put content natively or you want to upload the content, the video to each of these platforms so that as they're scrolling, they can pause and watch. Um, and that's what, that's what the platforms want you to do. They don't want you to send people away. They don't want you to link to your site. They don't want you to link to other social media platforms. But also, as if from the user experience, if I'm scrolling, I want to see something, I just want to see it. Like if I, if you, this is a video, I'm just going to pause and watch that video. I'm less likely to click any kind of link. So, so yeah, basically, you know, I, I said a lot of things here, but the, the idea being you want to put your content where your audience or your potential audience already hangs out. And if you don't know where they are, then the goal is to put it in as many places. Now, you know, we, we're talking about a podcast, but for Amazon or online sellers, let's say that you have a product video that you've mm -hmm. done, or you've got testimonials. Um, right. It could be like market review testimonials, or it could be a Zoom. You could go on if you have a Zoom account and just record yourself just going on uh, about something. As for a podcast, so let's say something really lo like a lot longer, 30 minutes to an hour. Say you have that type of content. Well, the beauty of this is that Kelsey can go in and take, Hanny's going to say there's four tips or four steps to do this. We can zero in and be very specific. So when you go to YouTube or you search the internet, we've got that title that's being optimized to bring people specifically to those four points. And it's mm -hmm. so simple to do. And then try to add a transcript like for search engine optimization on YouTube on an hour long video. It's not mm -hmm. going to happen. Try doing it on a two minute clip. Now you've got when you're putting in your description or your titles uh, into YouTube, for example, you can have them fully optimized and searchable. So your specific audience, if somebody's looking right now at repurposing content, we're going to have four tips uh, on repurposing content that's going to be up on, on YouTube. And hopefully it will be optimized really, you know, really soon, like within a day or two. Mm -hmm. But um, Hanny, what about, can you take us through the process, like break down maybe step by step what people have to do um, uh, to uh, create a clip or put it onto multiple platforms? Yeah, I mean, before we even jump into that, if you don't mind, I'm going to take sure. one step back and just kind of talk about the strategy. You know, let's not talk about mm -hmm. the tools because there's, you know, there's repurpose.io or you can do it with the video editing tool. There's many ways to do it, but let's let's all kind of get on the same page here. And, and what have we been you know, teaching our users and seeing what works best in terms of the most efficient way of, of uh, creating content is to, let's say you create content. If you're going to sit, if you're starting to create content now, my biggest recommendation is to go live like we're doing now. We're going live on Facebook. Um, you can go live on multiple channels like, like uh, you know, we're doing here, but keep it simple. Go live on Facebook. Let's kind of simplify. So once you go live on Facebook, uh, how do you turn that into, you know, 20 pieces of content? So live on Facebook, that's one piece of content. Send a copy to YouTube. That's another piece of content. Um, and then take your three to five key takeaways, clip them out, you know, keep them around one minute short. And then you, then you post those onto Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and maybe other Facebook pages that you have or groups. Um, so, and then the other thing is you want to turn your, uh, your Facebook live into an audio podcast. I mean, you can't do it all the time, but if the content makes sense and someone can consume it and listen in, in audio only, and you know, you're not sharing your screen and something like that, you're explaining concepts, then definitely there's no reason why you can't turn that into a podcast, an audio only podcast. So that's another piece of content. And then last but not least, it's your blog or your website. So you want to put this content in the video, embed the video from Facebook or the version on YouTube, either way onto your own site. So someone, who's not really on social, not looking on social, but is already a subscriber, is already following you on your email list or already kind of following your blog, they can consume the content. So kind of, I'm going to sort of summarize it in, in 10 seconds. Your live stream can turn into a full video on YouTube, clips on social, you know, Instagram, Twitter, that kind of stuff. 
audio podcast so people can consume it on the go so that they can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. And then last but not least, on your own site as a blog post. So those are like, that's the bird's eye view of, of the approach here. So that way you just focus on creating one content, one interview, one live show a week, and then you can turn it into all those different pieces of content. And one of the things that we do, um, we have a newsletter. So we'll provide different pieces of content within the newsletter. And then for our, uh, for our website, we'll take, uh, we'll write something about this topic and uh, it'll be a lengthy like 1500 word article and then we'll embed just the clips into that as well exactly like you're saying mm. nice nice yeah. and what we'll do this is kind of cool so if you're hey amazon sellers if you really want to get bang for a, your buck out of a piece of um uh, content create your blog article put the information in there then create a press release your press release mm -hmm. with a different topic about, you know, the content marketing, or it could be your product, your, your, whatever you're talking about with your, um, with your product listing on Amazon. Um, it could be a launch. It could be um, some research that you've done and you write the press release. Well, guess what? Most press releases have a YouTube embedding, uh, it allows for YouTube embedding. So you can take some of the repurposed content, put it on there, mm. make it relevant to your blog article and link it to your blog article. And now you're going to have links back to your Amazon page, links over to your blog article, which is also linking over to YouTube. So that's a, another way of doing it. Nice. Yeah, there's so many ways to repurpose. I mean, we've been doing this for many years now, and we've seen people do amazing things and people do creative things. Um, but what we teach, like in our, in our course, is like when when you sign up for our software, you get access to our course. It's just to keep it, well, keep it simple, and you know, pick one main source, whatever you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable going live, go live. If you're not comfortable going live, but you're comfortable recording videos. Maybe a Zoom recording you do with a, with an expert or or a testimonial with a client, whatever it is, do that. Record it and then uh, and then upload it to Facebook, for example, um, or then like up, upload it and repurpose it. So, and, or if you're not comfortable being on camera, then just do an audio podcast. Start with audio, and there's mm -hmm. ways to convert the audio into a video so that you can share that out on social media as well. So, pick a platform you're comfortable creating on. And my recommendation is to go live uh, for sure. There's no editing involved. That's the best part of everything I'm talking about. The best part of going live, once you get over this, the jitters, which after doing it once or twice, you get over very quickly, is that you never, you don't have to really edit the video. I mean, we're going to create snippets and clips. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But in terms of going live, you do a half an hour episode, 45 minutes, whatever it is, and then you're done. There's no like take one or oh, take two. I didn't like how I said that. Oh, let me yeah. do that again. That's a killer. That's a time killer, right? We're not movie producers. We have a business that we run. We don't have time to be spending a whole day creating content. We, boom. In an hour, we go live. The content is done. And then I have content for the whole entire week by repurposing it to different platforms. So that's kind of my our goal. We understand that... People who create content are not doing it necessarily for fun. They're doing it. A lot of them are doing it as a business. They have a they have a business to run, so they can't spend full time creating content. Great. And hey, and, I see Michelle Worthy's watching today. Hi, Michelle. How are you? So, uh, hey, Michelle. I, uh, one of the things I was wondering about: uh, Are there any really simple techniques that we can use um, for to create content? Yeah, and yeah, for sure. Number one is go live, like I mentioned earlier, for all right. the reasons. Yeah. Um, the other one is, I mean, in terms of content ideas, that's always another challenge people have. It's like, okay, all right, I'm going live, or I'm going to record a video, but what do I talk about? What do I say? What do people want to hear? Right. So the idea is, you want to, if you have an audience of some sort, is an email list or a following on social media, um, then definitely, you know, reach out to them. Hey, find out what what they want to hear about but sometimes you can't do that so the other, the other strategy is go in and go to your existing website or existing videos you've already published and see which ones are kind of have the most engagement which ones have 
most likes, which one has most views, and then create more content around that. Uh, that's another little trick. Um, and then there's a last trick, but this is, um, I can't think of the tool right now, but there are a few tools out there that will help you find what people are searching for. I mean, like what phrases, what words are they searching for? Usually like, you know, how, how do I, uh, you can even use YouTube to be honest, right? As you type in, how do I repurpose? And it'll kind of autofill things in this YouTube search bar. Those are like kind of the most, it's almost like a hint of what people are looking for on YouTube. So there are tools or you can even use YouTube or I think even the Google AdSense. Anyway, you can research tools, but the idea is there's tools out there to help you find what people are searching for. And then by creating content uh, around those topics and that just, that eliminates like the, the guesswork. You're like, okay, people are searching for this. I'm going to make a video to answer that one question. And that's another tip. Don't make a video that's um, trying to answer all the questions or diving deep into uh, many topics. Pick a topic and then boom, focus on that. And from start to finish, here's the problem. Here's my thoughts on it. And here's some solutions to help you get around this problem. And those are the kind of videos that do well, especially on YouTube. That tool that you were talking about, was it Ask the Public? Ask the Public. That's the one. Exactly. Yeah. You read my mind. We're yeah, connected. I it, love it's it. a great tool. Yeah. So it really digs deep and it makes things so much easier. Uh, the other one of the other areas, again, online sellers, what do you want to do? Well, you want to find out what the pain points are and checking out your competition. What are the negative reviews that are affecting your competition mm. or the positive and bring it and spin it the other way to show and and work it against not against but work it in a positive light for your product. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Reviews read about what people are saying or what people are frustrated with and and then yeah, then highlight that or make or offer solutions to that problem. So right. yeah, there's so much, so many ways to create the content. But ask the answer the public or ask the public, ask whatever the public. it is. Ask yeah. the public. Um, that's a great tool. I, I it's relatively new, and I remember playing with it when it first came out. When I well, when I first heard about it, and it was like, pff, it gives you like a tree yeah. of all these like different avenues of different types of content you can explore by just typing in a couple keywords. It's it's a really great tool. Yeah, there there was another um, LSI. Anyway, I'll, I'll try to think of it, but there was another one for, for Amazon sellers, which shows um, what's linked to what product and what's frequently bought together. So you could also talk about products that are related to your product. Hmm. And that's, again, it's just another way. And also there's uh, one of the ways that, like you were talking about going out on YouTube or going out on Google, um, yeah, you could just type in, you know, any type of influencer or blogger um, that's that's in the niche. Take a look at what they're writing about. Uh, one of the things that we've done uh, is there's a um, there's a search string in Google, and I believe it's 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 just our, I will find this out and post it, but it's just uh, similar. So it's articles that are similar to, oh. let's say you're doing bully sticks and something's on Perina. Uh, you can go and just put in the search string similar to this article and it'll pull up a ton of articles that are related. And then you can just look at the bloggers and get more information about those bloggers yeah. and read what they're putting up. And then there's your content for, you know, for the month. Yeah. And then, you know, you can always interview customers like you think you mentioned it yeah. earlier and then you can also interview experts in the space right if you're in fitness you're selling fitness products hey interview an expert there's something about interviewing an expert that gives you almost an authority because hey you're connected with this expert and you're bringing knowledge to your audience so kind of by association you you become an expert in that field so it's there's almost such a power in, in interviewing experts in your field so that's another way another type of content you create and it's, it's um I mean, obviously, sometimes it's hard to find an expert. Um, I mean, not hard. It takes time to connect with an expert and bring them on your show. Um, but it's, it's definitely, you know, mix up the content. Some can be interviews, some can be you, some can be uh, testimonials, etc. cetera. Um, there are a couple of good questions here. Um, I'd like to answer one from Michelle. Sure, uh, uh, sure go ahead. Watch. Yeah, this one here. I, I mean, yep. it's an interesting because, uh, you know, 
I have daughters as well. And, and um, my daughter's 11 now and since she wants to do videos and stuff. I, I always feel, you know, I was always nervous as a parent. You don't want your, especially young children to get, you know, negative comments or just to put themselves out there. So we're very careful about that. But I think the follow-up question is to let her be the face of the business. Yep. My opinion, it's going to depend on what kind of business you're in, but my opinion is if you're doing a kind of coaching, consulting, if you're involved in the business and you interact with the clients, you should be the face of the business. Uh, people want to people want to do business with people who they know. Like they want to get to know you via video and then decide if they want to work with you. But if you're selling products, you know, maybe you can consider that, but if, depending on what kind of business you're in. Uh, but I would, you know, I try to associate myself with my products. Like I put my picture on all the websites. I'm always the face, kind of quote, the face of the product. And I think that helps, especially, you know, when we go out, and I go out to conferences and people have seen me, oh, hey, you know, recognize your face. There's something about a personal human touch to associate a person with a product, especially in my world where it's, it's a software and people, you know, they don't really get to know the people behind that, the companies that build software. So yeah. I, there's I also a, a follow up, I guess, a comment from Sharon. Um, helping out Michelle as well. So as a mother, I think that only you can answer this. Do you want your daughter out there in the online world at such a young age? Yeah. That's something only you can answer. So yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. So and thank you, Sharon. Uh, and got to say hi to Sharon too. The people from Australia. Oh, Sharon, I, I forget you're in Europe now. But uh, I just noticed that uh, a couple of the listeners are from Australia. What are you doing up? You know, there is a replay, <laughs> but uh, uh, one of the other things I want to talk about um, using, again, we're not talking about your app, but content marketing, uh, mm -hmm. video is one thing, then you've got your images and, you know, different ways of getting images um, and using those images. Uh, it's really, an, it's the wild west right now on Amazon. Amazon wants us to build a community. They especially want us to build that community around a brand. I mean, that's one of the reasons why they put out Amazon Posts and Amazon Live. Well, how do you get that content? Uh, okay, so you mm. might be able to, you know, use an Instagram account and get people to tag, you know, using your product. You can grab that that information. You can just um, use a uh, uh, an app like Repost. Uh, put, Download it to your photos and then upload it into post. You can have all sorts of influencer campaigns to grab um, uh, product uh, images, lifestyle. You can use images from your website um, and just get them onto Amazon Post. We've already, we talk a lot about Amazon Post because that is the social media platform to help build, if you're using your brand, followers now. I don't know if you've seen that on the new posts, but if they go through brands, they can actually follow. And whenever you are doing something or announcing something, you can announce it to your followers. But on the other side, a lot of people aren't talking about Amazon Live. They think it's complicated. Mm. They think it's an, you know, like a really arduous task to do this. Well, guess what? Repurposing, you can take your, your testimonials, you can take these clips and just upload them. You don't have to be live on Amazon Live. You can take repurposed clips and just mm. put them up there and nobody i guarantee you nobody is doing this right now that's so powerful just a just a little wow. yeah i didn't know that that's awesome yeah one two punch so images and 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 by the way so now with amazon live amazon live has that follow button as well and so you do get access to your customers once you announce anything so they if you're going live guess what? They're getting a notification. So hmm. anyways, you can build your crowd, you can build your, and the other part to this, say you're repurposing this on social media. Well, with social media now, you can drive, Amazon's got your personal brand feed page, not only on desktop, but on mobile. So you can drive new traffic over to your, so, uh, over to your brand feed page, which you can get them to like. And it also gives you the cutting edge because if you think of uh, an Amazon listing, everything's what everybody else has to do. White picture, white background. Until they scroll down and they see related posts, 
Now you've got what looks like an Instagram post. It catches their mm -hmm. eye and boom. Now you've got a potential of, oh, and by the way, this is also on your competitors. So it's a free access to promote on your competitor's listing. So if they see your brand, they oh, wow. press on it, they're going over to your brand page and you have a potential to um, get the impressions, but also convert them over to your brand. So just a couple That's of things nice. about Amazon. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's for like video, it just in general, like video is the most powerful way to mm -hmm. connect with people, right? Connect with your, with your customers, connect with potential customers. Um, and then just knowing that you don't have to, just the idea of, of not having to create content every day, you just, you know, create a piece of content, uh, chop it up into smaller clips and putting on different platforms, which is the whole idea of repurposing content. Um, it's just, it's just almost liberating, right? Because I, I, I used to hate the fact I see people posting videos every day and I'm like, how are these people doing it? Don't they have a, don't they have a business to run? Don't they have, right. you know, nothing. Else? What are they, how are they doing this? Uh, uh, and then, you know, once we got into this repurpose app ourselves, we realized that it's, it's not about, it's not all about creating content every day. It is about publishing regularly. And if you can do it daily, it's still my recommendation to post daily, but don't, don't feel like you have to create daily. You can take, what, what you what we're doing now for example and this can be 20 pieces of content on yeah on five or six different platforms or people always forget go back you know go back to your hard drive go back to your facebook page see the videos you've done or your youtube channel go back hey you've you've created content way back um take that download that chop it up and then put that on social media you know if it's still relevant then you can still repurpose it that way as well so don't think creation think how can, what can I do with what I have already or what I'm creating, you know, once a week kind of thing. This is my, my, uh, my strategies create once a week or maybe, or maybe batch like four, four in one day. And then you have enough content for the whole month. Like literally the, four pieces of content can give you content every day for the whole month. Yeah. One of the, one of the, uh, things we like to do as well, uh, you take a look at all the images that you have. And, you know, what do you do with them? Okay, you can put them out as images on your, uh, like on Facebook, for example. Uh, but they're images. And you're mm. really trying to get that pattern interrupt, especially if you're doing an ad. Well, how can you do that? And maybe you don't have video. Well, take a look at cinemagraphs and plotographs. It's so easy to create a, a still with a, a, let's say my Hawaii picture, like on my profile page, which I think Kelsey, you just changed. But anyways, <laughs> you've got this, you know, three waterfalls in Hawaii. And all I have to do is basically drag my finger down a, uh, you know, a plotograph or a cinemagraph app. And now the waterfall has turned into motion. And, you know, mm. people like I, when I was selling my mother soap, like for, for people in um, uh, races, obstacle, like these crazy people who love these racing in mud. But uh, we had a campaign get, called um, Get Clean with Mud. And it would, they were completely covered in mud, except the person's hair was just waving. And I got so much attention just mm. because the person's hair was waving in the wind. And all I had to do was just take the magic wand outlined their hair and now it waved and guess what i can use that for um again repurposing i can do it with a video i can have different parts of the uh image moving it's so easy to do mm -hmm. yeah it's the yeah, name of the game is repurposing right you use what you have you use existing content um and um yeah, don't 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 feel like you're in a hamster wheel <laughs> trying yeah. to get create content every day because that's not what people are doing. Uh, well, they're posting Hanny, daily, uh, but they're not creating daily. I, I know in in our world, like ecom world, um, we get bombarded with shiny objects, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you would agree with this, but with certain apps. So, let's say that you have that plotograph app or the repost app or like repurposing or whatever do you do you would you recommend taking a finite amount put up the blinders you know for the most part and just stick with those apps become yeah. experts within those apps and not worry about all the shiny objects that are coming at you for you know social media yeah there's always every week there's some new app out there that does something new um 
yeah, I, I totally agree. If you have an app, you, if you're using something right now to, to solve the problem, whether it's, you know, stitching videos, uh, sorry, images together into a slideshow, whether it's converting, uh, whatever it is, whatever tool you're using, just keep using it. Um, yeah. Because at the end of the day, nobody, it's going to be a ton of apps. You're going to be distracted. And, you know, people are easily distracted with new, new products and new services. Uh, just find what works for you. Just basically find what what's the easiest way to create content. I mean, forget about tools. Like, what is pick a pick a style? Hey, I like to do audio recordings. I don't like to show my face. I want to do audio podcasts. No problem. Then that, that's your like pick your style: audio, video, or live. Those are to me like almost like the three. I guess you know images maybe could be another style. I'm not an expert in that area, but mm -hmm. um, so pick a style that you want to use the one you're comfortable with and then go with that and then say okay let's say i'm doing live streaming okay what is what platform do i use for live streaming do i just go on facebook do i go uh use something like a stream yard like we're using here you know do a little bit of research figure out what you're comfortable with what's easy to use and that's the key easy to use and then that's it stick with it i mean there's going to be a new live streaming platform that's going to come out and it may look better or look different, but it's like, why? It, at the end of the day, it's the content that matters. Right? Right. It's not It's not about just jumping to different tools. No one's going to know or care what tools you're using to create this. You keep using what you're using and keep putting out content, and that's the key. Um, so, yeah, definitely shiny shiny object syndrome is, is a problem, even for me, too. I get like, <laughs> oh, what's this? Let me check it out. And then I bookmark it, and then I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I? I don't need this. I already have a solution for this problem. I already have a tool for this problem. I, you know, I use StreamYard for my live streaming. So why do I care if a new software comes out? All right? It's, it's uh, we easily get distracted. So, yeah, pick pick a style and then pick a tool that will help you create content you're comfortable with and it's easy to use and stick with it until you have a problem until it doesn't work anymore yeah. or it's limiting in some way then you can consider it but yeah there's so much stuff out there um that will do it that will get you distracted for sure yeah and if you do happen to download an app on your iphone this happened <laughs> to me uh it's, i'm sure it's happened to everybody but Get prepared to be bombarded by shiny objects because mm. the algorithm is going to hit you up the second that you download some sort of Photoshop app or whatever app it is. Now you're going to yeah. get yeah, that's going to be in your feed. So <laughs> just yeah. warning you when we say, you know, the, try to put those, you know, the, the blinders up, um, you're going to get hit by all areas, especially when you start downloading yeah. apps on uh, iPhone. Yeah, for sure. Once, but figure out what you want to do first before you try to research tools. Like, what's your strategy? Hey, video, live streaming, audio, images. Pick something and then find a tool and then go with that. Um, and then, you know, the goal being you create it and then you'll be able to put it out on different platforms, right? That's, you know, you know Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, IGTV, whatever. Like, you know, that, that's, that's the goal, right? You're creating content so it doesn't sit on one, one platform, it's, it's able to be posted on multiple platforms. So that's why video is, the end result of a video is the best way to go. So whether, even if you're starting with audio, there are tools, including repurpose and other tools that can take the audio into a video format for you so you can share that or upload that to um, your Instagram feed and your YouTube channel, et cetera. So everything really ends up as a video because that's what these platforms want you to post right. and upload. So I know we've talked about uh, a couple of ways to reach more people, but are there any other ways that you think of that can, uh, that you can reach more people using content other than what we've already talked about or how can you? Um, I can't think of it. I mean, really the consistency, like what you're doing by posting content regularly, uh, daily, even if you can, Again, don't be scared. You're not creating daily. You're posting daily. There's, yeah. there's a difference. Um, is that you're training the algorithms for that that social channel that, hey, you are someone who posts content daily. So the more you do it, the more like, oh, right, I mean, this algorithm, is, this, uh, this channel, Facebook, for example, oh, this person's posting daily. I'm going to show more of their stuff. So, you know, you're not, if you post for a week, every day, you know, you may not see the instant uh, you know results but 
just the consistency of it well it's it's like it's like a training it's like machine learning you're training these these uh, social channels say hey this this person or this page or this youtube channel whatever it is is posting regularly just pay attention to them because so, these platforms want content they want you to post the more you post you you're doing them a favor so they're going to give you you know, more love back so just to be clear the more consistent you are with uh with posting the more promotion or the more weight you'll have with the different social platforms okay right. very good yes cool. that's it and if you do it if you do it daily awesome like that's like the way to go you could i mean i've seen people post three four times a day like in terms of video content and that's great but to me it's like once a day is manageable you know with you know with tools out there you know you're not you know you're scheduling content of course you're not always up you know logging in every morning and uploading to twitter and uploading you, know, you schedule the content so that you have content flowing in um, video content flowing in on a daily basis on all channels that's that's the goal here when i was um involved with social media um years ago uh, the goal was to post multiple times a day mm -hmm. i've heard both you know people say oh no no that's overkill nowadays uh post quality content once a day what do you think about that um i i feel cons i mean i don't know i i feel like twitter is, is one of those platforms where it's like it's like a quick snapshot in time and mm -hmm. if you do it once a day it's like it could disappear very quickly into the right. twitter twitter sphere and you you know may not see it so maybe consider uploading multiple times to Twitter. But again, I'm, I'm not an expert in like on the algorithms, how they work. I'm not trying to claim that. I'm just going based on what I hear and what what's kind of the strategy here. I, I feel that you know, based on what I know, once a day is plenty. It's already more than most people are doing, especially as video. If you're posting images and stuff, you can supplement like a video and then later in the day, you can uh, do a do another another piece of content that's an image post for example you can do that but i mean from a video perspective i think if you're doing once a day on each platform like yeah. once a day on facebook once a day on twitter once a day on instagram etc then you're way ahead of everybody else okay is there another question Kel? yeah uh so gary v is a big fan of as much content as possible do you have any platforms you can recommend for max return on post Good question. Like which platforms to post on? I mean, I would stick with it's kind of like the four or five basics, like the Facebook. I'm just looking at the icon here. You do Facebook, uh, YouTube for sure, as from an SEO perspective, um, and then definitely Instagram, Instagram TV, which are kind of linked together. Facebook. Um, you know, now people a lot of people are talking TikTok now. I'm not big on TikTok myself. I haven't dove into it. But you know, there are new platforms that are gonna come out that will give you a lot more exposure when they're young, like like TikTok, and it's still relatively new. Um, but the more you can automate, the better. So I, I like stick with the traditional ones. I stick with LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and then IGTV. And the reason why I say IGTV is first instead of Instagram is IGTV gives you a little bit longer. You can go up to ten minutes, but they also share the first. 30 seconds of it or so to your Instagram feed. So all your Instagram followers can see your content. Um, so that's why I say IGTV, but yeah, Pinterest is another one. I keep hearing a lot. I, I for the longest time, I didn't even know they did video. Mm. Um, and I'm hearing Pinterest is a lot of video content, like native video that you can upload to it. Again, I'm not experienced with it, but definitely, um, definitely something you want to experiment with Pinterest. TikTok, it's going to depend on, you know, your, what, what are you doing? What your business is, where, you know, your people hang out, but if you're not sure, I mean, at some point you're going to get, you're going to burn out. Like what, what are you going to be posting on everywhere? You're going to do TikTok, And a lot of these don't have abilities to schedule. You can't schedule content. So you got to be there like click, 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 TikTok every day. I got to be like, it gets exhausting and you don't see the return. So the more you can automate and schedule out there. And then it might free up your time to do, th you know, experiment with, you know, Pinterest or TikTok or maybe Amazon Live. Maybe you can speak Norm about that. I'm not very familiar, to be honest, but Amazon Live, I think it's relatively new, right? Just yeah, it's, weeks it's or fairly months new ago. And yeah. not a lot of people are using it. 
they're, which is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is the perfect time to build your yeah. brand community and repurposing this type of video content, even the full podcast, like what we're doing right now, if this was about a fitness product, a supplement or whatever, and you uploaded that, um, you would start to get followers. One of the other things uh, that uh, we had Mayan Gordon on, and if you didn't, if you missed that podcast, you should go back and check out what she says about TikTok. She's mm -hmm. got, um, she talks about ways of um, getting influencers uh, on TikTok to promote very, very inexpensively or free um, mm -hmm. because it really hasn't caught on like Instagram. Instagram, you can pay big bucks for influencers. Uh, I think mm -hmm. she's got 2 million followers. Um, it's crazy. But wow. um, if you get a chance, take a look at that podcast and she'll, she'll show you how to build content in the TikTok community. Interesting. So, we're trying to do that, but Kelsey and I are in different parts of the world, and we found out recently that he can't edit. All these TikTok things I did are stuck on my phone, and he can't edit them. So, oh, uh, uh, one flaw in TikTok. But you learn, <laughs> yeah. right? So this is yeah. all this stuff is you learn, and like going live, you learn about live. You are going to screw up going live. Yep. I do it all the time. <laughs> And, Still you know, after it, yeah. the first time or the second time in the fetal position, you just go for it. Even asking questions. I'm not a professional interviewer. You know, mm -hmm. we just, if I make a, a mistake, Hanny's going to fill in for me. So yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you a quick funny story. I was going live once. I did my live and then I hit the end broadcast button, or at least I thought I did. And it said, are you sure you want to end your broadcast? And I didn't see that message because I just thought I ended it. And the phone rang, it was a pizza delivery person. And I'm having a conversation with them because they're law. And it's all live in front of everybody here. And that's okay. And that's the cool thing about live is that it's live and it's like, it's human. It's real. Like it's, this is how it is. And you know, some people may not like that, but some people, a lot of people do. I just feel a connection with you, the person behind the live stream that you're not this big corporation that's hiding behind this cameras and lights and you know everything's fake and staged and prepared it's just you know we're real people having real businesses selling real products and services and you get to know us the people behind it and right. so there's a there's a nice authentic feel to going live and like you said you people make mistakes and um, you do make mistakes and you will but the key is you keep pushing through and you don't make that an excuse not to create again Right. Yeah. Just push forward. Uh, are there, uh, are there any, um, mistakes or anything to avoid when going, uh, when creating content? Avoid uh, one of the, my pet peeves and I see people do it sometimes it's you're creating content. You're not focused on what you're on the topic, like, mm. especially on YouTube especially especially on youtube it's because people go in for solutions on on youtube the platform people are searching hey how do i uh, fix this window on my honda whatever 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 it is so they're searching for how do i this or how to this so my pet peeve is when you get land on that video and this other person is talking about this and then it's kind of diverting into different things and it's like well i came here to learn how to fix this problem you're not telling me this i'm out of here i leave right away so my tip here is if you're doing these type of videos, A, stick to the topic, pick one topic or one pain point of your customers or pick one uh, problem you're trying to help with or give a solution for. And then like stick with one, but also say that right in the beginning. You say, hey everyone, my name is Hanny Mora. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this, this, this. And then say, okay, here's you know three tips for repurposing your content. And then jump right into the solution and then elaborate a little bit, go deeper into it. So give them the answer right away. Great don't like point. tease them. Don't keep them like hanging. I know you want people to watch the rest of the video, but if you're building this relationship where it's like, Hey, I'm going to make you watch me ramble about something else and then give you the answer at the end, you're not going to build a good relationship and people are not going to come back and watch more videos of yours. If you come in, I'm going to show you how to do this. Here's how to do it. Use this tool, do this, do this, and then keep rolling obviously you want more content so keep talking diving deeper about the topic but kind of say the problem say the answer and then roll with it and i think that helps and then you can also use another tip i know we you asked for mistakes i'm kind of flipping it around to say some tips um if you're if you know you're creating content especially as long content 
and uh, you know you're going to repurpose it. Like you want to, you're going to cut it up into smaller clips and share. Uh, I learned this trick, trick pretty recently from one of our customers, actually. And basically, say, let's say, you know, we have three. In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways to repurpose your content. And then I would say, okay, first way is put your content onto a blog post. And I'll talk a little bit about that for a minute or two. And that's the second way is to go to YouTube. So I, I kind of like list almost like the table of contents and talk a little bit about, you know, each of those bullet points. And the reason why you do that in the beginning is so that you can go in and easily clip those out and repurpose them to as teaser clips on social media. Uh, so you don't have to necessarily watch the entire video to pull out some clips. You can kind of, if you, especially if you're doing a solo video, a solo live stream by yourself, you can list it all in the front and then it makes it super easy for you to pull out those one or two minute clips right off the beginning without having to rewatch the entire hour long. So that's another tip I learned that I like that a lot. It's, it saves you time. But I, if but you need to be aware that when you're creating content, it's not going to live in one place. I'm creating content with the intention of putting it into smaller clips with the intention of posting it to multiple platforms. So I almost designed a structure of how I deliver my content to make that cutting, cutting it up to pieces a lot easier for me. Very good. That's a great tip. Um, Kelsey will be talking about that after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, Simon has a question. Yeah, I'll read it. Uh, we all love live stuff, and that's why live sport and music is so huge. I guess that now we can't see sport and music. We are all looking for alternatives. Lunch with Norm is the perfect nice. substitute. Oh, and nice. you know what? I, I really that. didn't see that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Simon. Okay, so uh, we're at about 50 minutes here. Uh, now let's talk about, like, are there any final takeaways? And then I want to talk a little bit about repurpose.io. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say new takeaways, but let's kind of like a recap. A, create content with the intention and of knowing that you're going to repurpose it and put it to different platforms. And that's good because when you go, especially when you go live and you not haven't done it before, you may get discouraged when nobody shows up to your lives. You're like, oh, why am I creating this content if nobody's going to consume it? The good news is you don't care if anybody shows up in the beginning. And not you don't care, but you're not as affected by it because you know this content is going out to Facebook, is going out to Instagram. You're going to chop it up into little clips on Twitter, LinkedIn. So you know there's going to be way more life to your content. So you're not discouraged if, you know, one or two people or nobody shows up when you when you go live. Um, so that's that's number one is don't be discouraged because your life, your content lives way beyond the initial creation. Um, and then number two is it's just practice makes perfect. Like you want to get in the habit of creating content once a week and then get in the habit of repurposing it um, to a different platform, meaning putting it onto different platforms uh, because it's a waste to have a nice video. Even if it's like two, three minute video, it's a waste just to post that video on one platform. I mean, you're missing out on another potential audience that had never heard of you. Uh, like, like can discover your content on different platforms because they, they, they don't search on YouTube, they won't, they won't find you. Right. So you want to be on Facebook, you want to be here, here and there. And then last but not least, if you don't have an audio podcast, I think it's one of the like almost powerful but most underrated tools out there. So you think, oh no, I have to create more content for my audio podcast. No, you don't. You can take videos that you're doing and turn them into audios and upload them as podcasts. So take advantage of the audio podcast. There's a lot of opportunity there that you could be missing out on. And it's not that difficult because you're not creating new stuff. Obviously, you're re repurposing what you have. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, tons of content. And we'll be posting tons of content from this podcast on content. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like the matrix within the matrix. <laughs> there, there we go. All right. I, I love your app. I have nothing to do with your app. I don't accept any type of affiliate fees. I don't get referral fees. I love your app. And I, if you don't mind, uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as our app is a web app, like it's a login with your web browser. And the goal is this, the goal is sorry, the steps are this, you connect your social media platform. So you connect the YouTube channel, click a button, hook up your Facebook channel. 
uh, your Twitter account, you know, whatever you want to repurpose to. And then you start making rules. Um, and a rule is simple. Say, I want to take a content from this platform. I want to do something to it, some kind of action. And the number three is I want to send it somewhere else. So for example, I want to take my videos from Facebook, my live streams from Facebook. I want to convert them into audios and I want to upload them to my podcast host. That's one example. Uh, then you can make another rule that said, hey, take a video from my Facebook page, turn it into a vertical video, and then uh, burn in some captions on it. You can design what it looks like and then send it to my Dropbox folder because I want to you know, schedule that to Instagram. Um, I want to go from uh, an audio, convert it to a video, send it to YouTube so I can have my audio content on YouTube. It's very rule-based. We have a course that gives you some recommendations and walks you through how to set up all the different rules. But the goal, the idea is once you set up these rules, you can decide, Hey, for this rule, I want it to be automatic. So just turn on the switch. Hey, it's automatic. Every time I go live on Facebook on this particular page, I want you to send a copy to YouTube. Boom. You don't even need to log into our service. It does it for you automatically. Um, after you're done. So after you're done live streaming, some rules you go in, let's say you want to do clips. You have the ability to kind of drag a slider here, drag a slider here, create a clip, and then just hit the button to schedule. Say, all right, I want this clip to go out on YouTube uh, on YouTube on Monday, and I want the second clip to go out on Twitter on Monday, and I want the third clip to go out on LinkedIn on Tuesday. So you have the ability to schedule, to trim content, like pick little clips of them within, the, within the, our tool and uh, have them scheduled out to multiple platforms. So it's, it's hard to... It, it may sound hard the way I'm explaining it, but it's, it's really a rule-based system. It's really kind of, it walks you through. The best way to do it is to try it. We have a free trial. That's what we have a free trial. Is to kind of experience it and publish four videos yourself to get a feel for how it works. Um, because it's a huge time saver. Not only does it do the, create these videos for you, the vertical, the square, the captions burnt in, the headline on top, all that good stuff. If you want that, it will do that for you, but also it does the uploading for you. Meaning you can schedule a content so that on Friday morning, this clip goes out to YouTube. You don't need to log into any software or have someone on your team or yourself go to your phone and, oh no, I have to upload it. Nothing. It just happens automatically. We can do uploads to LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, et cetera. That course, if I remember when we first started using it, it's a, it's a free course, isn't it? Yes. It's a free course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just, and it just gives you some ideas about content, similar tips to what we had, how to use the app. So, and I know, Kelsey, if you want to come on for a second, you use this all the time. How much time does it save you? Oh, so much. Um, and it does, like, when you first log in, you kind of get a little intimidated thinking about all these workflows. But after, like, your course does an excellent job of walking you through, and it really is simple. Um, you set it up once. Um, you can modify it too if you want to change something, but yeah, I highly recommend it. It saves so much time and yeah, it's great. I love it. Yeah. So if you're on the fence, awesome. uh, getting into content marketing, there are tools available. If you just wanted to do something very simple, go ahead and try it out, um, you, you know, on your own, not using this and then you can check it out. Um, you know, it's a, there's a free, um, trial and see if, if this is something you want to get into. Uh, if you schedule it right, or if you get a VA to do it, uh, you know, you'll get that exposure. We're all fighting for exposure, especially in fourth quarter. And by getting more impressions, either through Amazon posts, give you an example, we had one post uh, on Amazon, because we have so many competitors that we're, um, we're on now, we had over 200,000 impre 200, impressions on one post. Um, we have an average with my one client of around 20,000 impressions, which uh, probably turns into, I just hit my volume here. I hope this is okay and I'm not blowing away everybody's eardrums, but <laughs> um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it turns into roughly 5,000 clicks over the period of the month that we're doing, which are all people who are, you have to click four times on Amazon posts. Every time you click, you drop about 50 to 75% of your audience. The only people that have the final click through, which the reports show, 
are people determined to see your product or hmm. to buy your product. And you're probably going to be getting conversion rates of about 30 or 40 percent. I don't know because they don't publish it, but if you start this off the very first time, take a look at what your conversion rate is at the beginning, and then take a look once you start Amazon Post on a regular basis, and you're going to see a, a jump in your conversion rate. So nice. these are the things that you can do to drive external traffic uh, to your product during fourth quarter, which now is the time to do it. And that's why it was so important to get Hanny onto the podcast today. So, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, just one thing. Um, so for the course, it's when you sign up, right? Um, yeah, we get you sign up for a free trial. A uh, free trial is at the repurpose.io. You'll get a in, in the welcome email. You get a link to the course. Um, it's a free course. Or you can also sign up for the course directly if you go to repurpose.io/blueprint. Um, that will send you right to the course. So the course covers a lot of stuff. We start about content creation, all the way down to like tips and trip tips and tricks for creating content, some like tutorials on how to live stream, how to podcast, some like, but with a very important section kind of halfway through called distribution. And that's where he walks you through how to set up the repurpose.io platform to really optimize it. And it does it step by step. Here's how to go to Twitter. Here's how to go to this. And here's the recommended size. And here's the recommended snippet versus this versus that. It walks you through video by video um, and it's free. Very good. Okay, I think that's it. We we said it'd be 45 for you, Hanny. Mm. We took it up to an hour. I hope you that's don't mind good. it. No problem, um, no problem. I, I can geek out all day. Very good. Look, this was packed with information, um, tons of content. So people, I mean, if you are going into fourth quarter, check this out. I can't push it enough that you need to get other types of external traffic and this will build and it's absolutely super simple or i would not be doing it um hanny thanks for joining us today my pleasure thanks for having me here okay and one more time where can people get a hold of you um you can check out the repurpose platform at repurpose.io and if you want to connect with me personally to say hi ask questions you can you can hit our site. It's hit my site, hannymora.com. Very good. All right. So I hope everybody enjoyed the podcast today. Uh, the whole episode can be found and shorter clips, repurposed clips. It can be found on Norm Ferrar, a.k.a. The Beard Guy. And that's our Facebook page. If you want to see the videos, uh, you could check out our YouTube channel at Norm Ferrar. And we upload new videos, new content every day. Uh, also, we have a, uh, a newsletter. The newsletter does not suck. It has tons of content on it. Um, it has new articles. It also has repurposed clips. Uh, but we, we add every Monday all new content right from Amazon, on, uh, online marketing, digital marketing, new brands, what they're doing. So we're trying to give the user, the online user, a better, but just build better knowledge on how to build their online stores. So I think that's it, Kelsey. Where are you? Hello, hello. Uh, uh, thank you, Michelle and Marina, for stopping by and Forensic Detectors. Um, you guys have been great with all your uh, input of today's episode. Um, if you haven't yet, please like this video. Uh, you can share it to your friends, maybe tag someone that will do, do us well here at Lunch with Norm. Um, we are an official podcast, so you can find us at uh, Apple, Spot Apple, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasts, you can find Lunch with Norm. And yeah, as Norm said, any of the content you see here um, goes directly to YouTube using repurpose.io. And I just want to say, as someone that uses repurpose.io, it is awesome. Um, if you're looking to repurpose content, um, I highly recommend them as someone who uses it pretty much, I would say, every day. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the, the show, everyone. And okay. that's it, I think. So, Friday's episode, we're going to be joined by Feedback Wizzes Henson Wu, and we're going to be talking about Amazon's new communications policy. So, it, I, I recommend tuning in on Friday 
completely selfish, uh, you know, completely, I'm completely selfish about this, but it's going to be great content. Um, there have been some major changes in the communication policy. Henson's going to explain it all. All right. So please join us every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. We look forward to our next podcast and joining you all then. And well, thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur.